If you're a beginner at drawing portraits and you need an easier way in, perhaps this approach might help you. I learned this from the guys over at Love Life Drawing who have a great YouTube channel for figure drawing. I'll leave a link in the description, but I wanted to share it with you now. If you're a beginner, I think it can really help you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these shapes and we're gonna look at like the values of the shapes. So we're gonna assign values. This lightest part here is like a value number one. Okay, the green part is, you know, let's, let's make this a two. The blue part, we're gonna make this three. And the red is gonna be this stuff here. So we've got about four values. The highlights are one. And so we're kind of looking for these value zones and we're picking four values because that's simple. And when you squint, you can get these things down from an infinite value range or a 10 value range down to a four value range. And we're gonna look at these as kind of maps. And what you're gonna do is trace over these things trace over the shapes made by the values so the number one shapes you can kind of see that here's like a very highlight and there's the boundaries pretty clear and you could see these shapes right and we're just going to go over remember I'm, I'm squinting and comparing these sort of value zones. And there's all these little details here. Okay, and then let's go to number two. Yeah, so these are these little bit darker ones, right? And so you're going to come out with a kind of map of shapes. And oftentimes that can help because shapes are a lot easier than forms. So you'll get really good at looking at values and seeing their flat 2D shapes because a head, anything is made up just of a series of shapes, interlocking shapes. Um, working together to form a picture. Find some more value three zones or value two zones. And so we're just getting familiar. We're just tracing the actual photo and we're getting familiar with what this thing looks like. So we're going through it like on a trial, trial run. This is really good practice. Okay, so let's go with the next one, value three. And so that's going to be definitely in the shadows. So the first two were in the lights on the highlight side. I'm going to put this whole ear, when I squint down, it just goes into the value number three. Keep these families, kind of group the families a little bit. So here's the border there. And I'm just drawing this in blue, but on the drawing, you can just keep it in one in black, right? If you're drawing in pencil, you don't need to draw this line right here, but I'm drawing it just to make the point that all this is in one value. Even the lips, if I squint down, some of it is value three and some of it's going to be value four and some of it's in the light. And then the final one is all this what's left over. All right, so what do we have? We've got this, whoa, <laughs> that looks cool. All right, so now you've been over, you've looked at this, you've studied it from the value ranges and the shapes that those values correspond to. 
And now you can just go ahead and make a drawing from that. Now, if you're having trouble at this point, just, just draw a light box. Let's do a box because the head's going to fit inside a box roughly. And you can put a little marquee around this thing. Okay, just messed up with the layers there. Okay. Knock this thing back. So it's there just in case you need it. And from here, you know, we could put that box also. Let's duplicate that. And bring it over to this head. And so what we can do is just draw negative shapes as well as positive shapes. So the negative shapes are the things outside of the head. They're everything other than what you're interested in. The positive shapes are what you're interested in. Okay, so now we're just going to draw this thing. And the box kind of helps us not go too wide or too narrow, right? Gives us something to shoot for. Okay, so we've just got a bunch of lines here. You could go just down the side. That chin touches, right? And then we've got this. We come back up here. And the idea is to not draw a face because the face has so much information and we get intimidated by the anatomy and by the complexity. And the idea is to just abstract out simple shapes so that you're not drawing a face anymore. You're just drawing shapes. And it becomes easier and kind of funner to do this way. I'm just following this green line. And this helps with your, your heights, right? The height of this line. The diagonals, right? And the widths from here to here. You're training your eye this way. This is excellent training. How far over? When does it start its descent? And all the while I'm looking, how far down do I go? So when I draw this, I'm looking at the line, but I'm also judging this distance here, right? I'm about my eyes bouncing from, from the line to this shape in here to see how wide it is here and how narrow it is down there. And I'm also my eyes bouncing down this way to see, you know, how far down I should make this line. Is it down here where the nose ends? Is it up here? You know, how far down should I go? So I'm, as I'm drawing it, I'm my eyes bouncing around, judging the distance from the edge to the contour line. And it takes a fair amount of focused concentration to do this. Maybe it would help if we just took all the color out of this one and just made it just lines so we can see the simple pattern and shapes a lot more clearly. Another way you could do this that works really well to get the idea that, you know, when you have to, when you learn how to draw, you have to forget the names of things, forget what it is and just look like a dumb Xerox, right? And you're just taking in raw data of lines right now. I'm telling you the best way to measure is to use your eyes, to train your eyes and your hands together to measure distances, heights, widths, and angles 
and then you start to get really good at it. You might feel really bad at it right now, but you do this and you're going to get better. It's just like anything you train. You get in the gym, it hurts, but you get results because of the, <laughs> because of the repetition. You can't not have results. Let's see what this, so I'm going for big, I'm trying to go for big shapes first and then smaller and smaller refining facets breaking it down i try to look at them like triangles circles and squares and just say oh there's a square there's a triangle there's a trapezoid that kind of simplification makes me th see things clearer and better You might find that you miss, you know, it's okay. It's going to be a little messy. Don't worry about it. Just relax. It takes a lot of concentration, but that hand-eye coordination that you need so much is being targeted and trained for sure. So if you haven't exercised that, used that, then that's why it's going to hurt. <laughs> so you can see that the back of the head doesn't touch the edge of the square, right? So I'm just looking at the space in between, right? The leftover space. That's the negative space out here. That's negative, negative, negative. Everything inside the head, that's positive space. So that's what I'm... You can call it positive space or positive shapes. It's going diagonal, then it cuts over, then it goes down again, and then it hits. So this space in here, I can look at that, right? I can use that negative space to help me. That leftover space right in there. And you can always adjust this stuff. You'll always be adjusting because it's just a series of Correcting mistakes. That's all drawing is for me. So my eyes are just bouncing back and forth, bouncing back and forth, seeing what's wider, what's narrower. And in relationship to the thing next to it, is it bigger? Is it smaller? Is it, is it rounder? Is it squarer? That's all I'm thinking, like a dumb Xerox. I'm not thinking any anatomy at all, because that would just really complicate stuff okay so now <clears throat> you've got this great line drawing and you can just bring in the reference again you can go ahead and just put on kind of the idea of the the planes and we'll do that by filling in the values corresponding to each shape. So we'll fill in the number ones and twos and threes and fours, etc., until we have a finished picture. So let's go ahead and do that. Notice how I'm filling in the shapes with flat value, not much modulation in them. We can do that later and introduce value changes to turn the form. But initially, we'll just keep it real flat and simple. Okay, so there it is. And so I want you to try this and see if it works for you. See if it helps kind of release you from the tension of trying to, you know, when your mind is tentative and your lines are, are scratchy and searching because your hand-eye coordination isn't there and you haven't observed enough. And then you look at a face and you're like, oh my gosh, how can I do this? This hopefully can help you just to draw these simple shapes. 
and take a lot of the complexity, a lot of the, you know, really intimidation out of it. So there, that looks that looks pretty cool already. All right now, that's that's pretty fun. And the next thing you do is just blend your edges. You might get some good results out of that. So I'm hoping that that can help you. If you're having trouble with the planes of the face, you know, try this method, try it a few times, and then post your results and let me know how it went. And, you know, give yourself a week or two trying this way, practicing, because it's going to take a little while if you haven't done it. You know, and if you're used to gridding off a photo and then transferring the grid, you know, then you, you haven't learned some of these essential skills of just using your hand-eye coordination at a higher level. And the only way to gain this skill is to train and train and just do it over and over again. And you will grow. You will get these skills. And uh, so anyway, I hope that was helpful. And we will see you in the next one. All right, you guys, I hope this video helped you. Let me know in the comments box below what you thought. You can follow me on Instagram at DrawJuice and check out my online portrait drawing mentorship and boot camp at www.drawjuice.com. All right, we'll see you in the next one.